Louis Grau was a renowned and respected artist whose monumental murals still grace the famous Chicago Theater and many other buildings and were central to many significant architectural designs. Grau's works are continuing to be discovered and documented. Louis Grau worked 55 years making a living as an artist, surviving and thriving through two world wars, the Roaring Twenties, the Dust Bowl, the Depression, and Modernism. The roots of this acclaimed artist are right here in the heartland. Louis was born in Council Bluffs in 1887, the son of Louis F. Grell II and Magdalena Getz. His family was a typical immigrant working class family of the day, living on Avenue C. His father ran a butcher shop located on West Broadway. From those humble beginnings, Grell went on to study in some of the most prestigious European art academies, was a member of Munich's elite American Artists Club, and eventually settled in Chicago where he worked, taught, and enjoyed a prolific career as a mural artist. Grell spent decades creating massive, magnificent murals that were in demand by the top theaters, hotels, restaurants, banks, and other public spaces. Throughout his career, Grell remained true to his no-nonsense, heartland, working-class values, avoiding interviews and press and concentrating on his work and family. Growing up in Council Bluffs, young Louis began to show a real talent as an artist beginning as early as the age of two. By the age of eight or ten, his talent was advancing beyond the abilities of his local teachers. The family recognized Louis had real potential and made arrangements to send him to Germany to live with family and pursue an arts education. But what a sacrifice. I think that's a great sacrifice for a family to do. To, in order for a son to pursue uh, his dreams. Young Louis studied art in Hamburg, Munich, Italy, and Paris from 1900 to 1915. From 1905 to 1907, he attended the School of Applied Arts in Hamburg. In those days, Munich and Hamburg rivaled France in their appeal to art students. He was uh, learning and being trained at the elite academies in Europe, the most prestigious academies. In 1907, the Omaha World Herald wrote an article about young Louis that began, it means something to have stood at the head of a class of art students numbering 3,000 for three years and to be only 19 years of age in the last year and the youngest student in a country where art is a great pursuit. The article went on to list Louis's accomplishments, which were all the more impressive considering he spent the first two years simply learning German so that he could begin his art education. He spoke with a quite distinct German accent, and I imagine it was because of, you know, all of the years that he was over there. In 1907, at the age of 19, Grell returned home for an extended visit with his family. While home in America, he earned his first mural commission. The artist's mother, Magdalena, decides to take the family on a, on a visit to Salt Lake City to his uncle, John Getz. And while the entire family was there in Salt Lake City, they were touring the Manufacturers Hall that was in preparations for the 1907 Utah State Fair. Of course, Louis Grell's attention was drawn to an artist who was painting a mural, a large mural commission in Manufacturers Hall. Louis Grell and this artist struck up a conversation and uh, Louis learned that uh, the gentleman that earned that commission was struggling uh, to finish the mural commission. It turns out that Louis Grell takes over the commission from this gentleman who could not complete it he hires two helpers to help him, and he ends up spending three months in Salt Lake City to finish the commission. The mural that Louis painted in Salt Lake City was 10 feet tall by 270 feet long, and it, the name of it was This is the Place, and it depicted Brigham Young's entry into uh, Salt Lake Basin. After finishing the mural and paying his assistance, Grell still had enough funds to return to Europe and pursue more advanced studies. Back in Germany from 1908 to 1910, Grell attended the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Munich and the University of Munich, studying under noted artists and teachers. He also studied at the prestigious École des Beaux-Arts in Paris. From 1913 to 1915, Grell traveled through Europe, painting and exhibiting his work.
when World War I broke out, Grell, like many of his American friends in Germany, returned to the United States. For a brief time, Grell was in New York designing stage sets for Broadway shows. He soon settled in Chicago after being offered a teaching position at the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts. This was considered the oldest and most prestigious art academy at that time in the U.S. In 1917, one of Grell's students included a young Walt Disney, who was attending McKinley High School during the day and spending many nights learning to draw at the academy. In the beginning, Grell and one of his best friends from the American Artists Club, E. Martin Hennings, roomed together in the Fine Arts Building. Both artists soon moved to their own studios in the Tree Studios Artists Colony. Tree Studio was founded in 1894 by Judge Lambert Tree, and he designed it specifically for artists to keep them in Chicago after the World's Columbian Fair of 1893. Other fellow members of the American Artists Club, along with Grell and Hennings, were Walter Ufer, Carl Bonin, and Victor Higgins. The friends all relocated to Chicago. They exhibited extensively together. The group also enjoyed social occasions such as costume parties and beach excursions. I, I had never come across the term bohemian before, but after my mother, after you know, looking at pictures or talking to my aunt about about Louis, she just said they're just a bunch of bohemians back there because they, you know, they partied, they had masquerades. I mean, these were some of these. And she had known them through the roaring, you know, the roaring twenties. Had been quite a quite a time for that that group of people back there. So she always referred to them as as the bohemians. E. Martin Hennings lived at Tree Studios near Grell for many years. Hennings, Grell, Ufer, Hockner, and Higgins exhibited together throughout Chicago. Through these friends, Grell had a strong connection with some of the founding members of the prestigious Taos Society of Artists. Grell would be a member of the Tree Studios Artists Colony until his death. From 1917 until 1960, he called Tree Studios home moving several times into three different studio spaces. In 1960, at the age of 72, he and a fellow artist chained themselves to one of the last remaining courtyard trees to protest pending demolition of the building. In 1922, Grell was invited to teach at the celebrated Art Institute of Chicago. He taught classes including life drawing and various subjects related to commercial art and advertising. Now working as a professor, in addition to his commissions and commercial work, he was able to send for his German sweetheart, Friedel. Louis, Louis and Friedel met in approximately 1907. They were separated for seven years until April of 1922 when he sent for her and she came back and they were married on April 1st, 1922. They spent seven years apart during the war and the time period after the war and their love stayed true. Both the major newspapers in Chicago at the time, the Chicago Daily News and the Chicago Tribune both covered their wedding and reproduced photographs of them at that time. In 1930, Grell won the coveted Harry Frank Prize for Figure Composition at the Art Institute of Chicago with his large painting titled Destiny. In 1936, he won the Municipal Art League Prize for Portraiture with Portrait of the Painter, Mussel, which can be seen on the Art Institute of Chicago website today. Julius Mussel was a friend and fellow artist. Though his work won awards, Grell's focus was on his teaching and on his painting. He was featured in an August 1926 article in the publication The Poster, the National Journal of Advertising Art and Poster Art. In the interview, he talked about his teaching methods and strategies, not his career. This was a key characteristic of Louis Grell. His modesty and focus on working and creating, rather than promoting himself, are reasons why his name is not immediately known to the art world in the same way as his colleagues, friends, and peers. As a working artist, he remained busy even during the Depression, continuing to get large commissions for public buildings. Throughout his career, Grell's younger sister Helen was one of his biggest supporters and took great interest in making sure the press recognized him, even if Lewis might have been reluctant. The Council Bluffs Daily Nonpareils periodic articles generally coincided with his visits home to Council Bluffs. 
The Nonpareils articles have helped guide Grell's family to a better understanding of the importance and scope of Grell's work. Louis Grell was always painting. He painted portraits and other subjects in his easel painting. He also became quickly sought after for his magnificent murals. Louis Grell had a special gift for designing and creating these large-scale paintings. Mural painting had been a part of his education and early career, and in Chicago, his mural work flourished. The ones that he could paint in his studio, which typically later on in his career he did uh, paint most of those in tree studios, and he would have two rollers, one on each end of, of his studio, and he would paint a certain section, maybe 10 or 20 feet, allow that to dry, and then he would roll it uh, farther down so that he can continue painting the mural. Some of his murals were up to 275 feet long. But the uh, significant large murals, I believe that he would paint most of those on scaffolding, on, on site. In 1921, Grell had been commissioned to paint the murals for the now famous Chicago Theater. The grand opening showcased beautiful murals as large as 50 feet wide painted in a French fairy tale theme. Called the Wonder Theater of America, the Chicago Theater is still in operation today and is listed as a National Historic Place and a Chicago landmark. Originally owned and operated by Balaban and Katz, the structure was designed and built by Rap and Rap Architects. For the Chicago World's Fair Exposition of 1933 and 34, Grell was commissioned to design new murals for the Chicago Theater. This time he turned to Roman and Greek mythology for inspiration and the murals he created can still be seen in this famous theater. These types of painted murals were significant in American culture and architecture from early to mid-century. Murals were central design elements in public buildings from courthouses, banks, and theaters to the finest hotels and restaurants. Louis Grell's talents with large-scale murals and his understanding of how the mural designs and decorative elements were integral to a building's architectural design made Grell's murals in demand for the most prestigious buildings. Grell had a long-standing collaboration with the Albert Pick Hotel Group, which was one of America's premier family-owned hotel operators. Grell created the murals for the lobby of the famed Congress Plaza Hotel in Chicago in 1940. In 1952, the Congress Hotel was part of the Pick Hotels Group and Grell was commissioned to redesign the lobby murals. In 1955, Grell also designed three very large murals for the Congress Hotel's Pompeian Room. Two walls were 50 feet long. Grell painted three elaborate mythological themed panels and most likely designed the menu for the Pompeian Room, which includes images and descriptions of the murals. Grell's long association with the Pick Hotels began with a very uncharacteristic commission. He was contacted about doing cartoon murals for the hotel's Purple Cow restaurant at the Pick, Ohio, in Youngstown, Ohio. Grell agreed to try his hand at this type of painting. The humorous Purple Cow murals and their accompanying poems show Grell's sense of form, movement, and composition employed in a delightful way. Oh, the Purple Cows, they were in my bedroom growing up and I would look at those purple cows and it was a cartoon, which was later I found out was something rare that um, Louis Grell had ever painted. They were just whimsical and fun to look at every day. I enjoyed waking up and seeing those purple cows. Grell had long-standing relationships with many hotel and theater chains. His work with Paramount Theaters dated back to as early as 1926, when he was commissioned to paint the ceiling mural of the Times Square Theater's Grand Hall. Rap and Rap were the architects on the massive project that featured mural and easel art from many notable American artists. Grell's 125-foot-long Spirit of Light mural graced the large Italian marble entry. In 1929, Grell was commissioned to design the entire entrance lobby, ceiling, and walls for the Paramount Theater in Toledo, Ohio. Grell Theater murals have recently been conserved and restored in the Palace Theater, built as the Manos Theater in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Another fabulous restoration of Grell's mural designs can be found in Cincinnati. The Netherland Plaza Hotel and Carew Tower opened in January 1931. It is a National Historic Landmark and a member of the Historic Hotels of America. 
With different interior themes, this hotel's expansive palm court, which was originally the hotel lobby, features 10 French-themed murals. The murals display Grell's ability to integrate the decorative architectural elements with the murals. Another version of Grell's Apollo and his chariot covers the ceiling of a grand hallway called the Apollo Gallery. Mythological figures in the Grell style are found throughout the hotel. In his later years, as hotel and theater murals were less in demand, Grell moved into designing and painting religious themes and work for churches. Documenting the work of Louis Grell was Richard Grell's full-time job for over a year before a series of events connected him with the art department within the University of Nebraska's College of Communication, Fine Arts, and Media. Over the course of my involvement as a paintings conservator with uh, Louis Grell's works and with uh, the Grell Family Foundation, the um, total number of works of oil paintings that have come into my lab has been about a dozen. So after I had come to know these paintings better and also the interest of Richard Grell and his family in having uh, some sort of an exhibition venue for these, these works to be seen by the public, I thought immediately that it might be nice to connect them over to UNO where there's an art gallery and a student track in the art history major for museum studies. In the fall of 2013, the Department of Art and Art History, along with the student Maverick PR Group and UNO Television, began a collaborative project with the Louis Grell Foundation. The project culminates with a January 2014 showing of Louis Grell's work in the UNO Gallery in the Weber Fine Arts Building. A special topics curatorial seminar, The Art of Louis Grell, led by Dr. Amy Morris, has had the incredible opportunity to curate the gallery show. They have also documented the collected works on canvas and paper. We felt compelled when Louis' artwork was shown to us to give the students a hands-on opportunity to curate a show and to curate the artwork of one of America's leading painters in the 20th century. There has never been a course at UNO in the Art and Art History Department like it where it brings together community, um, the students, and this famous artist. The biggest thing though was how to make this the best possible learning experience for students in all aspects of art. They're going to be learning about everything about putting together an exhibition from selecting the artwork to arranging it to uh, doing things like lighting, uh, how to publicize it, all of the, the various factors and things that are involved in an exhibition. And the other thing that's really, I've really been happy is the, ex the experiences that they've had and the interactions that they've had with uh, art historians, artists, curators, conservationists. So many people have contributed to this. And it's just an overall, uh, it's been a great experience. And also, it, it's experiences that they ha can have some tangible results that they can put on their resumes. I did this. My job for the class has been to be the curator. I worked with Jean, who is my assistant curator, in designing the layout of the show after the students picked. Um, which works were going to be included. We looked through those and then added and subtracted to make sure that the show felt complete. I first started by um, dropping thumbnails into a Word document and rearranging until there started to be maybe kind of a common ground. And that's when we decided to put um, portraits, genre, and landscape all in the hexagon, and then the religious work in the smaller gallery and the secular mural work in the large gallery. This unique collaboration has offered exciting real-world experiences for the students. It was really neat to, to get a closer look at these pieces and seeing the details or the brushwork and you know the little surprises that you'd find on it. There's several of his paintings that we'll notice um, off to the side of a painting like little test works, color test works that he's done or just a drawing of a, of a face like as if Grell was practicing prior to you know, making the painting. So 
it's, it's neat to see these little discoveries when you're working with these pieces. Students from Maverick PR have worked with the project to promote the gallery show. Through being a member of MAV PR and working with the Grill Foundation as a client, um, it's really given me an idea of what it's going to be like working with a client, you know, once I graduate, um, all the different elements that go into planning and uh, putting together the media kit and all of the different things that each client requires. From their experiences, the students now have a new perspective and new opportunities. Since I do want to go to grad school, the fact that through this class I will get to publish as an undergraduate, which never happens, and be able to um, curate a show, which, you know, nobody gets to say they've done that as an undergraduate. It's a great opportunity. So I chose um, for my FUSE project the Toledo um, lobby. Um, the Toledo Theater was destroyed in the 1960s. I am planning on doing a 3D virtual reconstruction of the lobby with Grell's mural on the ceiling. All I have for it are some black and white photos of the lobby, so I'll basically have to reconstruct from these black and white photos, and I'm going to try to see if I can get it into color. Luckily for the color scheme, it looks as if Louis Grell used a palette and on some of his other works he has a very similar palette. Um, so I plan on taking this palette that he used in other murals and apply it to the mural colors on this lobby. The collaboration also furthers the work of the Lewis Grell Foundation, making exciting new discoveries about Grell's work. Seminar students located the prize-winning painting Destiny, that this Richard Grell had been looking for since early the, in his research. Paint, I received a, an email from Candace, the student curator of the show here at UNO, and she advised me that she had found Destiny. The painting hung in Lewis Grell's studio for over 30 years. We found Destiny because Dr. Morris put a book on hold, and I was looking through it with Andrea Shimmelhorn, another girl in the class, and she looked at it, it was like, oh look, Grell's in the book. And underneath Destiny, it was captioned that it was in the Rick Stilke collection. I'm like, well, Rick Stilke might still be around. We should try to contact him to see if he still has it or if he has any other information on Lewis. Rick Stilke is a conservator in Chicago. I heard back from him, he called me one day and he said, I do still have Destiny. I think it was the most important discovery during the seminar, and I'm very thrilled that it came from the students. The collaboration has also created a chance to share Lewis Grell's work with the community, bringing more recognition to this locally born artist. A great painting uh, is a paint, is, it's not the best technical painting necessarily. It's not the best likeness necessarily. But it's when an artist can say something that no one else can say. And I think particularly that the painting called The Artist speaks to me. Louis takes something that's literally, uh, in my mind, as if he was dreaming about it, a bird's eye perspective. And he's not a young artist, he's, he's a little portly and he's leaning back and my goodness, you look at that thing and it's like uh, the world is his apple. He is this privileged person who gets to look around him and take the world and reinvent it on his canvas. And I think in many respects that that could be Louis thinking of himself. So I think that's a painting that, that no one else has made, that no one else will make, and it's a painting that has a chance to stand the test of time. What I've really liked about Louis Grell, and what I, I think everyone appreciates him, even beyond their individual taste for his work, is the fact that he's so diverse. You know, he covers quite a bit of ground, whether it be the murals, the portraits, the paintings of dogs. Um, this is a guy who really does cover quite a bit of ground and has a diversity within his practice that isn't always common. He certainly can be an incredibly interesting painter. You know, these murals are incredibly peculiar at times. Um, his, his individual vision is quite innovative in moments when you least expect it. And in juxtaposition with some of the more traditional works he does, it's really nice to see that diversity and that kind of variability within a single career because it forces those of us who have to look at him to be equally agile on our feet and to be equally agile with our techniques and our methods of looking. And so, in a very selfish way, I like Louis Grell. He makes the rest of us better at what we do as art historians.
I think Louis would be honored that we are doing this show at a university since he was a professor. Uh, recently our family founded the Lewis Grell Foundation and the purpose of the foundation is to research, collect, preserve, and archive uh, the information related to Lewis Grell and to continue to exhibit his works. The Lewis Grell Foundation hopes to create a permanent exhibition of Grell's work. The foundation would like to restore his studio in Chicago's Tree Studios Artist Colony building. For more information on Lewis Grell, visit lewisgrell.com.